Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Witch Wednesdays. Um, so I finally finished the Witch GBA game, thank god, because that thing was driving me up the wall. Which means I had time to start on another Witch Wednesdays video and I decided that what I was going to do is my follow up to the Spotlight on the Witch main cast video and do Spotlight on the Witch recurring cast. And what really prompted me to do this is the fact that just a few weeks ago we lost the incredible, irreplaceable Ed Asner, who was of course part of our witch cast family. Um, he passed away uh, very suddenly, very unexpectedly, although he was 91, but he was, you know, no one, no one saw it coming. And I just really wanted to talk about him and how much I loved him and I was like well he's going to be part of the witch recurring cast video so why don't I just go ahead and make that video and then I can talk a little bit about Ed and about his life but also talk about everyone else that's part of the witch the witch cast the witch family um so I have no idea how long this video is going to be because um once I actually included I decided to include like literally everybody who ever played a, a named character in Witch, which means that this video is like, well there's 28 slides and I would say around maybe 40 actors in total. My script came out it's over 6,000 words so this could be, we could be here a little while, um, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to talk about all these actors. There's some really interesting people with some really fascinating stories, some people that I had no idea were in the cast that I know from other things, just some really cool people in the Witch cast and it's going to be really exciting to get to sit and talk about them for a little while. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first up we have Grey Delisle who played Miranda as well as Amanda Boland, Weira in a few episodes, um, Lily Quinones and other people. Um, I couldn't find a single picture online of Weera, which I mean is probably fair because like the only time she appeared was in like that fake memory by Nerissa, so I had to use a comic book picture, but never mind that. Anyway, <laughs> Grey is a huge name in the voice acting world as well as being a comedian and a singer-songwriter. Some of her most well-known roles include Vicky and Tootie from The Fairly Odd Parents, which she has performed for 16 years. Um, Grandma Stuffums and Lizzie from Codename Kids Next Door, Mandy from Billy and Mandy, Sam and Danny Phantom, um, Black Canary and Batman the Brave and the Bold, she even sang in the musical episode, it was fantastic if you've never seen it, Jacqueline Natla in Tomb Raider Anniversary and Underworld, which is a big deal for me because I bloody love Tomb Raider, especially those, the LAU games, um, plus hundreds hundreds more characters across numerous series and video games. This girl is everywhere. One of her most famous roles is playing Daphne in Scooby-Doo. Um, she's been doing that since, I believe, since What's New Scooby-Doo came out, I think. She's been, she is still the current voice of Daphne. She's been doing it for a very long time at this point in time. Uh, her other role, which she's probably most known for, is Azula in Avatar The Last Airbender. And, I mean, who doesn't love Azula? The girl is the queen. We all fucking love Azula. But for me, um, my favourite role that she's ever played is Dr. Holiday, who's here on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, Dr. Holiday is from Generator Rex, which is my favourite cartoon in the whole world after which. Um, one day I'll do videos talking about Generator Rex, because I got her at some point. Uh, yeah, but she's my favourite character that Grey's ever done. Uh, but in addition to acting, Grey has also released six studio albums from the year 2000 to the year 2007 and launched her debut comedy act in 2018. She's definitely one of my favourite voice actors in existence. She's just great and if you have Twitter and you're not following Grey, you're missing out because this girl's tweets are hilarious. They are so funny. You've got to get on that. <laughs> Next up we have Cam Clark who played Dean Collins as well as Magruder and Max the photocopier. Um, Cam is another man who has a massive career in the voice acting world. His most famous roles are probably Leonardo in the 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle series and Liquid Snake in Metal Gear Solid, um, which one day I'm definitely going to play for the sheer joy of making you all suffer. Metal Gear Solid is my boyfriend's favourite game series and I've watched him play so many times and I've never given it a shot myself. 
So one day I'm going to have to sit down and play it and you all can suffer with me um, as I attempt to to play those games. <laughs> but I've seen Liquid Snake when I've been watching him play and he is a great character and Cam is so good playing him. Cam has been in over 100 productions in some capacity, although sometimes you might not realise it's him because he often uses the pseudonym of Jimmy fin Flinders. Jimmy Flinders. He was the original Dog Tanyan from Dog Tanyan and the Three Musca Hounds. He was Kagarosa and Abba in Bleach, Shotaro Kaneda in Akira, Austin Bucks in the best Miss Christmas movie ever, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer, which if you've never seen then you are missing out as well. Um, Bo, Bo from Scooby-Doo and Zombie Island, the guy that Velma kind of had a crush on. So many others, and for me, it was really important that he was the original voice of Subject 16 in Assassin's Creed 2 and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood back when he was just a voice in the grey rather than being a fully fledged character. Um, you know, the, the one that when Desmond went into like the animus and there was a figure and he said, The son, your son, and everyone was like, What does he mean? That was Cam Clark. Um, remember back when Assassin's Creed was good? Anyway, he also narrates Flip That House on the Discovery Home channel, because why not? If Etsu Auditori can narrate Say Yes to the Dress, then why can't Cam Clark narrate Flip That House? <laughs> but the thing that I always remember Cam Clark for is being the voice match for Matthew Roderick as Simba and performing We Are One on the Lion King 2 soundtrack. Yeah, that is Cam Clark doing that, and I love that song. That is one of the best songs Disney has ever made. Um, it's weird because Matthew Roderick can sing, you know, as evidenced by the fact that the producers exist and got so many Tonys, but at the time, apparently, he wasn't confident enough to, to sing in the movie, so they gave it to Cam Clark, and now I just can't imagine Simba sounding like Matthew Roderick when he sings. <laughs> like, I can't imagine it. Um, and then everything since then that Matthew Roderick hasn't wanted to play, um, if, you know, Simba appears in something and Matthew Roderick doesn't want to do it, they give it to Cam and I think he does great. Next up is Vern Uffett, who played Uriah as well as Tom Lair. He was temporarily the voice of Bathic, and he was Andrew Hornby and a bunch of additional characters. Vern is definitely not as well known as the previous people we've just talked about, but his career has spanned movies, television, commercials, animation, video games, radio and stage over the past 30 years. His very first acting role was also the very first role he ever auditioned for, just three weeks after moving to LA to pursue a career in acting. And that role was Nicole's boyfriend on Charles in Charge, and he is not the only person on this list who has been in Charles in Charge, as we will discover. <laughs> there is another person who is in Charles in Charge. Um, but that's what this photo here is from, this photo of, I think, Scott Bale sitting on the kitchen counter while Burn Up It stands with Nicole. Um, yeah, that, <laughs> I think that's what we're looking at. It's, it's very, very poor quality um, print screen from a YouTube video. <laughs> Burn tends to play bit parts in one episode characters across a variety of shows. He's just one of those people that tends to do a lot of guest roles. Um, but he has appeared in recurring roles in Kicking It on Disney XD and in The Young and the Restless. And in terms of voice acting, he has appeared in 44 episodes of Futurama and is known for playing Chalmers in Medal of Honor. And we can see him over here on the left. I sound like a tour guide when I do that. And on your left, you'll see a character from Medal of Honor. <laughs> Betty Jean Ward. Is she not just such a cutie? Look at that girl's face. I actually love her. She's so sweet. Betty was the voice of Velma in the 2000s Scooby-Doo productions. Um, she was... a uh, the voice for the movie series that they did, uh, Zombie Island, uh, Witches, Ghosts, Alien Invaders, and Cyber Chase. Uh, and she's actually my second favourite Velma, um, right behind Nicole Jaffe. I would say Grey Delilah is probably my fav second favourite Daphne. My favourite Daphne has always been Heather North, and my favourite Velma is Nicole Jaffe, but BJ Ward would be my second favourite. She was also the voice of Betty Rubble in the Flintstones in the 80s uh, through to the 2000s. And she provided voiceovers for attractions at Disneyland and Epcot, which is pretty cool. On top of her extensive acting career, Betty is also the creator and star of Stand Up Opera, a musical one-woman show, and is a licensed aviator so she can fly planes. <laughs> 
Also, a little bit of uh, fun fact about BJ Ward, she's Helen Hunt's stepmother. Which is just, just a fun, fun little tidbit. Oh yeah, and I forgot to say, she play. I mean, not that you can't see it, but she plays the mage, Halinor, and she was Mirrodell. She's not the main voice of Mirrodell, but she has played Mirrodell. But yeah, I, I was really happy that I managed to find a picture of the mage and Halinor, because, you know, they were talking to... She was talking to herself in Ennis for Narcissus, which is kind of fun. Up next we have Michael Bell. This guy has had a massive career. During the 70s and 80s, Michael Bell was a staple of children's cartoons, such as The Houndcat, Super Friends, Spider-Man and his amazing friends, The Smurfs, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Voltron, like so many children's cartoons. From 1991 to 2004, he was the voice of Drew Pickles, Chaz Finster and Dee Dee's father Boris in Rugrats and All Grown Up, which is awesome because I fucking love Rugrats so much. Um, he also appeared in video games such as World of Warcraft, uh, Diablo, Baldur's Gate, Ratchet and Clank, um, as well as playing Raziel in Legacy of Kane. I could be pronouncing that wrong. Um, and The Fear in Metal Gear Solid 3. So another Metal Gear person. And again, he's not the only one. It's not just him and it's not just Cam. We have a few Metal Gear stars in this list. Michael's also appeared in live action shows such as Star Trek, uh, Charlie's Angels and Dallas and alongside his wife Michael has written, directed and acted in dozens of stage productions and he was actually the founder and director of the West End Playhouse. Michael is a big supporter of union rights and he actually sued SAG-AFTRA, uh, I can never pronounce that, SAG-AFTRA, alongside Ed Asner, Martin Sheen and Nancy Sinatra among others after the unions merged, and he then served on the SAG-AFTRA Board of Directors from 2016 to 2019. In addition to all of the above though, Michael also invented the Greyway Rotating Drawn Water Recycling Device alongside his colleague Melanie Chartoff in 1991. Because again, why not? So he's he invented a drain water recycling device, as well as being an actor, <laughs> as you do. He's also Steve Gutenberg's godfather, and he was the one who taught Cam Clark the tricks of the voice acting trade right back at the start of his career. So he's got real connections, Michael Bell. He's a cool dude. I looked so hard to try and find a picture of Mama Blanc, and no one had one, and I couldn't be bothered going to get a print screen off YouTube, so I just didn't. But <laughs> I really love Mama Blanc. I'm sad that I didn't manage to get a photo of her. Next up we have Jim Cummings, who played Tridar, Harold Hale, and um, Eric's grandfather Zacharias. So I'm going to be quick on this one because Jim Cummings is not someone I really want to talk about for very long. Um, he's the current voice of Winnie the Pooh and he's been playing Tigger since the early 2000s. He's been playing Winnie the Pooh since the early 80s when he took over from Sterling Holloway. Um, he's also the voice match for Jeremy Irons as Scar in The Lion King, and he's actually the one who performed the last part of Be Prepared. Like, after the bit where Jeremy Irons, um, well, where Scar goes, you won't get a snap without me, Jeremy Irons actually, like, damaged his vocal cords so badly that he couldn't keep singing, so the last, like, chunk of the song is actually Jim Cummings doing a voice match. You can't really tell, but once you know, you can't help but try and listen for it. Um, he's also the singing voice for um, Chief Powhatan in Pocahontas and for Rasputin in Anastasia. Uh, and he's well known for being the voice of Smokey Bear in the TV ads uh, from 1993 all the way through 2006. And of course you can see from this image he's been Pete in Mickey Mouse, he was Ed the Hyena in The Lion King, he was Fuzzy Lumpkin in The Purple Girls, like this guy has been so many roles. But... <sighs> I want to love Jim Cummings because you don't understand how much I love Winnie the Pooh. I'm currently wearing a Winnie the Pooh jumper. Like, I'm wearing a Winnie the Pooh jumper with Eeyore on it right now. I love Winnie the Pooh so much. And the idea that my, like, childhood fave, like, this adorable little, like, incorruptibly pure little bear could be voiced by someone who is so unpleasant is so upsetting to me. But I've got a few issues with Jim Cummings, so I'm just going to briefly tell you, because I don't think it's right to just talk about people and not tell you about things that they've done. So, 
One thing about Jim Cummings is that he's a very outspoken right-wing Trump supporter and ain't nobody got time for that, <laughs> especially not me. Um, he's got some pretty messed up political and social views that he likes to talk about on Twitter and I'm just not on board with that as a human being with a soul. And he's also a Covid denier, so there's that. You know, people all over the world are dying in their droves and this man's out here telling us all that doesn't exist. For fuck's sake. Um, <laughs> On top of that, his ex-wife stated that Jim had, quote, engaged in physical, sexual, and emotional abuse, including but not limited to death threats, R words, and various sexual deviant behaviour forced upon me without my consent. During their marriage, he apparently R worded her in 2013 and abused their dog, all of which led to her filing a restraining order against him three times. Jim said that she was lying and her claim stemmed from being a drug addict. Jim got custody of their daughters, so I would say take all that with a grain of salt and a big allegedly, but regardless, it's definitely not a good look, and I prefer to just distance myself from Jim Cummings as much as I can. Moving quickly on. Alison Stoner as Lillian Hale. My girl, Alison. Alison Stoner is an actress, a singer, and a dancer. As a child, she was a real dance prodigy and featured in music videos for Missy Elliott's Work It, Gossip Folks, and I'm Really Hot, as well as Eminem's Just Lose It and No Tango Dinero by the Kumbaya Kings. As an actor, her first big role was as Sarah in Cheaper by the Dozen. She then went on to play Max in The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, Holly Hobby in the Holly Hobby movies, Camille in Step Up, and of course, perhaps her most famous roles, Caitlin Geller in Camp Rock, and Isabella... I didn't write down in my script her last name, and now I'm trying to remember what it is. Isabella Shapiro Garcia's... Garcia. Isabella Shapiro... Isabella Shapiro Garcia. Oh my god. Isabella Shapiro Garcia. <laughs> anyway. Isabella's obviously a damn legend, you know. What you doing? That didn't sound like her. <laughs> what you doing? There we go. I was doing the girl that has the parrot on YouTube there. That was a complete wrong what you doing. Um, but yeah, she's a damn legend. And obviously everyone remembers the bit in Camp Rock where she's, you know, DJing and doing this with her arms. And Demi Lovato's like, she's really good. Um... <laughs> I hate Cat Rock so much. <laughs> but she is, you know, as we all know, the one of the only characters in Cat Rock that you don't want to punch every 30 seconds of the film, because, for fuck's sake. Um, yeah, so, we, we stan Alison Stoner. In terms of voice acting, she's also played roles in Voltron and The Loud House, as well as taking over the voice of Kyrie from... Hayden Panettiere, I want to say? In Kingdom Hearts, uh, since Rechain of Memories. I love this girl, honestly, uh, uh, ever, even more since she's been out about her journey uh, to accept her sexuality after being raised in a community that did not accept anything other than cishet people. Um, she wrote a long article online about how she felt herself falling in love with a girl and she didn't want to accept it because she didn't, she'd been raised to think that being gay was wrong and then this girl was like, I, you know, but aren't we girlfriends? And she's like, I don't know, are we? And I think what happened was that Allison eventually came to her and was like, like, I want to, like, be your girlfriend. And the other girl was like, I thought you already were. <laughs> Which is just the cutest thing I've ever heard. Um, since then, she's made her own podcast called Queerology, a podcast on belief and being to discuss her faith and sexuality. And I just think she's fantastic. We love Ali. That's my girl right there. Up next is Lloyd Scherer. Lloyd has had a very varied career. He's done a lot of narration work, particularly for the History Channel. Um, you can hear him on shows such as Modern Marvels, Command Decisions, Engineering Disasters, and Dogfights. He's also narrated videos for the Church of Scientology, and uh, I'll leave that one there. Um, <laughs> but he's probably best known for being the voice of Fillmore, the hippie camper van, um, in Cars, which he started playing from Cars 2 onwards and in like the related media after George Carlin, the original voice, died. He's also done a lot of video game work, appearing as Kronos in God of War 2, Kip Darling in Ratchet and Clank, uh, Kalo Nord in Knights of the Old Republic, and many, many more. 
really cute thing about Lloyd that I, I just think is adorable is the fact that his stage name is actually Max Raphael, which is the names of his two sons, Max and Raphael. Isn't that the sweetest thing you've ever heard? Love this guy. Up next is Lauren Lester. Lauren has had a really interesting career. After graduating from the Occidental College, sorry I just noticed my cat, uh, neighbour's cat jumping past the window. After graduating from the Occidental College, he's gone on to appear in hundreds of episodes of TV shows and loads of movies in either one-off or recurring roles. He was the voice of Jordan. <laughs> well, a role that I find really interesting is that he was the voice of Jordan in the New Kids on the Block cartoon series back in 1990. Like, they were the New Kids on the Block, but they were voiced by voice actors, not by the New Kids on the Block. So he was Jordan, which is just bizarre to think about. I want to know who played Donnie. I really do. Um, he then went on to be Robin slash Nightwing in the DC Animated Universe from 1992 to 1999 and again in Batman and Harley Quinn in 2017. He played a recurring doctor on Victorious, which let's be real, everybody fucking loves Victorious, it's the best show ever, as well as appearing on soaps like General Hospital, The Young and the Restless and The Bold and the Beautiful. He returned to the DC Universe when he played Man Bat in Batman Arkham Knight, which is crazy because I can't believe I never noticed that the whole time I was playing. I never picked up that that was Lauren Lester. He's also appeared in movies like The Sweetest Thing, Seventeen Again, and The Hit List. On top of all that, Lauren is actually a star in the musical theatre world. Not content to just perform on the stage, he also wrote the stage show It's Magic, The Life and Music of Doris Day, which stars his wife Kelly. They are just a really talented bunch, that family. <laughs> Going back to Metal Gear Solid though, it's Paul Eiding as Akaton. I'm never sure if I'm saying his name right. I sometimes say it Eiding and sometimes say it Eiding. I'm not sure which one it is. I probably should have looked that up before recording this, but I didn't. Let me know in the comments below if you know how to pronounce his name. Paul is a huge star of the voice acting world. This man has played so many iconic characters. On the screen here we have Colonel Ray Campbell from Metal Gear, the entire Metal Gear series, Grandpa Max from Ben 10, the entire franchise from the original Ben 10 right up until the end of Omniverse, you know, ignoring that bloody reboot that they made, for fuck's sake. He's also the vault Tech rep from Fallout 4, and you know, apologies for the spoilers there if you've never played Fallout 4. <laughs> he also played Hojo in uh, Dirge of Cerberus and Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII, which is interesting because another actor for um, Hojo is later on in this slideshow, the actor for FF7 Remake, but he was Hojo in Dirge of Cerberus and Crisis Core. He's also been Zephyr in Ratchet and Clank, Theseus in God of War 2, John Locke in that bizarre Lost video game that I really must play sometime, and also was a bunch of people in Skyrim, because honestly who isn't a bunch of people in Skyrim at this point? <laughs> Paul has also provided additional voices to like pretty much every animated movie out there and every show and every game and anything that involves voice acting. He was even in The Prince of Egypt, which is my favourite movie of all time and that's just so cool to me. And Shrek. He was in Shrek. The Prince of Egypt's in Shrek. Can't get any better. This guy is literally living my dream. <laughs> what a guy. Now we come on to my dear, sweet Ed Asner. Let's talk a little bit about Eddie Asner. Ed began his career in television back in 1967 on the CBS show Studio One. From there, he appeared in a variety of television shows in bit part or recurring roles and in movies such as The Slender Thread, El Dorado and the iconic They Call Me Mr. Tibbs. But Eddie's first break was as Lou Grant in the Mary Tyler Moore show from 1970 to 1977. The character was so popular that he got his own spin-off series all about Lou Grant that was called Lou Grant. What was fascinating was that the Mary Tyler Moore show was a half-hour comedy whereas Lou Grant was an hour-long drama series but Ed managed to bring the character from one show to the other perfectly and played the character so well. He managed to make that transition from comedy to drama in the same character which is not easy but he did it because he was Ed Asner. However, these days there are probably two roles in particular that Ed is most well remembered for. The thing about the Mary Tyler Moore show and Lou Grant was that that was quite a while ago. If you ask anyone today where they recognise Ed Asner from, 
They'll probably tell you that they either know him as Santa Claus in Elf or as Carl Fredrickson in Disney's Up. Although for a lot of 80s and 90s kids, he's probably best known to you as Hudson from Gargoyles, who's down here in the left-hand corner. Greg Wiseman really loved Ed Asner and he cast him in every single thing that he made. Max Steel, 3 by 3 Eyes, Young Justice, Spectacular Spider-Man, Reign of Ghosts, and of course, he was Napoleon and Witch. But Ed was so much more than just an actor. Ed was a crusader. He was really passionate about workers' unions, about rights, and he was actually the president of the Screen Actors Guild from 1981 to 1985. He was a big part of the 1980 SAG strike and, as I mentioned earlier, he was one of the group who opposed the SAG-AFTRA merger. One of Ed's strongest held beliefs was that the USA should have national health care, and they should. His son said recently that Ed was viewed as a socialist but didn't really like the term, but his views led on to align with socialist groups like the Democratic Socialists of America and the Democratic Socialist Organizi Organizing Committee because they were the organisations that campaigned for what he believed in. It wasn't that he considered himself a socialist, but that his views aligned with the views of socialist groups, and he needed to join with people who were going to fight for what he wanted. In fact, Ed actually believed that Lou Grant was cancelled by CBS because they took umbrage with his far-left politics. Another thing that he was really passionate about was trying to bring awareness to the AIDS HIV pandemic, and in 2016, he worked on the production of and narrated a documentary about HIV and AIDS denialism. Outside of politics and unions, though, Ed supported many charities. He was on the board of directors for the Survivor Mitzvah Project to help elderly and impoverished Holocaust survivors in Eastern Europe. Ed himself actually came from an Ashkenazi Jew family, and so the Holocaust and support in Jewish people was really close to his heart. He was a member of the Comic Book Legal Defence Fund, an advisor to the Rosenberg Fund for Children, a supporter of Humane Borders, and a board member for the Defenders of Wildlife Charity and Exceptional Minds, which is a non-profit school and computer animation studio for young adults on the autism spectrum. In 2017, the Asner family opened the Ed Asner Family Centre, which provides arts, counselling, support groups, and camps for people with special needs and their families. He was previously connected to Autism Speaks, but as far as I know, he stopped being involved with them, hopefully because he realised that they suck. But he was then a board member for Aspiritech, which was a non-profit organisation which helped train autistic people to test software and perform quality assurance services for companies and give them loads of new vocational skills and get them into STEM careers and tech careers, which I think is really awesome, to be quite honest. Ed also did support the idea that 9-11 was an inside job, and he was in quite a few documentaries about that conspiracy theory, so... I mean, I'm just going to reserve judgement on that one, but I just thought I would drop it in there. <laughs> Ed never slowed down, though. In fact, he said that playing Carl and Up gave him a new lease of life. If you look at his Twitter, you'll see that he spent the last month of his life doing online Q&As with fans, signing Carl Funko Pops, doing interviews, and just generally making everyone happy. He was so excited to get to play Carl again in Doug Days, which just premiered this month on Disney+, Plus. unfortunately, without Ed being able to watch it. He was in the ninth decade of his life, but he clearly believed that rest was for the wicked, because he was just not giving up. Ed passed away at his home on the 29th of August this year, at the age of 91. He was truly a hero to me, and I already miss him so much. There's a lovely tribute to Ed on Greg Wiseman's website if you want to go and check that out. It's very sweet and I'll link it in the description box below. But Ed, wherever you are, I really hope that you know that you were awesome. Fun fact, I actually have a friend called Cree who was named after Cree Summer. True story. Anyway. It would probably be easier for me to name roles that Cree Summer hasn't played because, geez, she has done them all. Cree's acting career began when she was cast as Penny in the 1983 Inspector Gadget cartoon. From there, she went on to appear in shows like A Different World, Loving Single, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but animation is where you can usually find her. Some of her most famous roles include Susie Carmichael from Rugrats, Miranda and As Told by Ginger, and of course, my childhood hero, number five. From Codename Kids Next Door. Like seriously, I wanted to be number five 
so badly. And I still do. I don't want to be 10 years old, but I want to be number 5. Also, if you've been watching my Bratz Let's Plays, well, particularly the Bratz Forever Diamonds Let's Play, you will know already that Cree played Mandy, the cowgirl queen who socked Byron in the face with a boot, and also our frumping queen, Alonce. Oh, and who could forget that she was foxy love and drawn together, and if you don't know what that is, I am not going to tell you. <laughs> Cree's also an incredible singer, and her cover of Frank Zappa's Dirty Love is, fa is fantastic, and if you haven't heard it, you should look it up, because it's really good. I also wanted to say a fun fact about her is that her children are called Brave Little Wing and Hero Peregrine, and that is just amazing. And her brother is called Rainbow. Cree, Rainbow, Brave Little Wing, and Hero Peregrine. Incredible. Best names ever. Next up we have Susan Silo, who plays the spider version of Miranda. So Grey Delisle is Miranda as a human, and Susan Silo is Miranda as a big ugly spider. <laughs> Susan Silo is another actor who's appeared in hundreds of minor television roles. She began a career in 1957 when at the age of 15 she entered and won a contest of over 350 people who auditioned across the US to sing on the Jerry Lewis show. But since the late 1990s onwards Susan has worked primarily as a voice actor and a voice acting coach. She's appeared in programs for Hanna-Barbera, Marvel, Disney, Ruby Spears, Dick, and many more. Some of her more famous roles include Wuya in Zhaolin Showdown, Auntie Roon in Jennifer Lee, The Life and Times of Jennifer Lee, I always just call it Jennifer Lee, um, Yin in The Legend of Korra, but to me she is everyone's favourite thieving grandma, Marie Dudley, the Angel of the Slums from Final Fantasy VII and I had no idea that that was her until I started looking this up and I was amazed. I love Marie. Hell yeah. Susan actually does a lot of video game work these days and you can find her in games such as Gabriel Knight, Crash Bandicoot, God of War 2 and plenty others so keep your ears out for this gal. Next up we have Ogie Banks III as Tarani's older brother Peter Cook. I love this dude. As you can see from the screen, Ogi is the voice of my favourite closeted gay incel Dylan <laughs> from Bratz. Again, if you've been watching my Bratz LPs, you'll know, love and want to kill this guy. Also, fun fact, Ogi is the only actor in the main Bratz series that played the same character all the way from Saren and Stylin through to the cast change. Saren and Stylin was the very first Bratz movie and it had a bunch of uncredited actors. It took years for anyone to find out who even played them. But Ogie Banks was Dylan way back in Star and Style and he actually got to keep his role and no one else did. And apparently he's actually been back in 2020 make, um, or 2021. Him and Olivia Hack that played Chloe. Apparently they've been making Bratz TikToks which I haven't found yet but I need to. So Ogie is now like 100% the longest running Bratz actor and that's an achievement. And, I mean, Dylan. We all love Dylan. Look at his dumb face. Love him. Aside from being the best character in the Bratz universe, Ogie has also played Claude Wolf in Monster High, Luke Cage and Miles Morales in Ultimate Spider-Man, and Omoi, I think it's Omoi, in Naruto. He's also done a variety of Barbie franchise roles, and apparently this guy just really likes franchises based on dolls. I should really watch Monster High and find out if it's insane as Bratz. Like, I need to know. I need to know. Well, this man does definitely love his doll-based media, he's also appeared in Final Fantasy X2, Fallout 4, Saints Row 4, and Lego Batman. I just think this dude seems cool. Look at him. He's just a cool dude. Stan Ogie Banks. Here we have Darren Norris, who played Tynar, and honestly, who doesn't love Darren Norris? Darren is like the voice of our childhoods. He played Cosmo in The Fairly Odd Parents as well as Jorgen von Strankel and Timmy Dad, which always amazes me because Darren has such a deep voice like Mr. Turner, but Cosmo has like a voice so high it could break the sound barrier. So I, I don't know how he makes his voice that high. It amazes me. It really does. 
There was also Gordy in Nez the Classified Skill Survival Guide, which I stand by was the best show Nickelodeon ever made, and I won't accept feedback on that. But speaking of the best shows, he is also Cliff McCormack in Veronica Mars. I loved Veronica Mars so much, and every time Cliff showed up I was just like, it's Darren Norris! Love that guy. Other roles he's known for are Dick Daring in The Replacements, Knockout in Transformers Prime, Wile E. Coyote in The Looney Tunes Show, Count Spankula in Codename Kids Next Door, who is absolutely my favourite villain, um, Piros in Dot Hack, and he played Mr. Turner in that live action Fairly Odd Parents movie that had Drake Bell that none of us talk about. It's a shame. I don't know why they made that movie. It was, it was a bad decision. That was a bad choice. Fun fact number one about Darren Norris is that his full name is actually Darren Morrison Norblund, and the Norris is like a matchup of Morrison and Norblund. I just think that's really cool. Like, that's an inventive way to make a stage name. And number two, uh, fun fact, he was actually married to and has two kids with Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who is now married to Steve Bloom, who plays Blunk. The voice acting world is incredibly connected. Like, Everyone's married to everyone else's ex, that's just the way it works around here. <laughs> From this point on I'm just putting two people into each slide because we're kind of out of like the big, well CCH Founder is quite a big name, I wasn't, I kind of underestimated him anything because I have to say about her anyway. But yeah, I, I decided that since we got through kind of like the big name actors I put people into, two people into one slide. Anyway. So Carol Christine Hilaria Pounder is such a cool lady with an incredible career. I mean, look at this badass woman. I fucking love her. She started out in the 1980s playing a range of bit parts in TV shows before landing a recurring role as Dr. Angela Hicks on ER, which she played for three years. She then went on to play Detective Claudia Wims or Weems in The Shield, Irene Frederick in Warehouse 13 and Tyne Patterson in Sons of Anarchy before becoming one of the stars of NCIS New Orleans' Dr. Loretta Wade, a role that she played until its finale which aired a couple of months ago. In terms of animation, she was in Gargoyles, which of course she was because Greg Wiseman loves his cast and he will always bring them with him. She played Desdemona and Cold Fire. She also played Conway in The Lion Guard and she's portrayed Amanda Waller in so many DC franchises. She was in Justice League Unlimited, Superman and Batman Public Enemies, Arkham Origins, Arkham Origins Blackgate, and Assault on Arkham. All of those, she was Amanda Waller. To me though, Carol is always Moat from James Cameron's Avatar. I've mentioned before on this channel that I am a huge Avatar fan, like it is one of my top 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 favourite films. And the fact that she's Moat is just something that really resonates with me because I I love the Navi so much. Outside of acting, Carol is one of the founders of the Artists for a New South Africa, which raises awareness of post-apartheid and HIV and AIDS issues in South Africa. She also won the prestigious Caribbean American Heritage Award for Excellence in the Arts in 1997, and she's been nominated for an Emmy four times, an NAACP Image Award eight times, a Black Reel Award twice, one of which she won, and a Satellite Award twice, both of which she won. So the women's a damn legend. Over here we have Susan Chesler who played Cassidy and I can find very little info on Susan Chesler's life. She's appeared in movies such as Judas Kiss, playing Mona Lisa, as well as video games such as Guild Wars 2, Prototype, EverQuest 2 and God Hand. But it seems she keeps her life very much out of the spotlight, and good for her, honestly. I don't blame her. Iona Morris played Luba, and she is the only daughter of the famous actor Greg Morris and the older sister of fellow actor Phil Morris. She's best known for being the original voice of Storm in the 1990s X-Men cartoon and Spider-Man the Animated Series. She's also appeared as Medusa in the 1990s Fantastic Four cartoon, Claudia Grant in Robotech, Nia slash Betty in Phantom 2040, and Principal Stringent in Chalk Zone. I know a lot of people fucking love Chalk Zone, I've never seen it, but people love that cartoon. <laughs> as a child, she appeared in the original Star Trek with her brother Phil, and then she appeared again in Voyager and has appeared in The Twilight Zone. 
She's also been featured in video games such as Command and Conquer 4, Fallout 4, Sly Cooper Thieves in Time, and EverQuest 2. A lot of people on this list have been in EverQuest 2, it's bizarre. She was also in Leisure Suit Larry 6, which, I mean, maybe we should just move on. <laughs> Over here we have Michael Goh, and he is a big name in the voice acting industry. He's done so many voices that I honestly would be here all damn day listening, listing them. But here's a few. He's known for playing Deckard Kane in the Diablo games, Gopher in the Winnie the Pooh franchise, and for being the voice match for Mike Myers in like any Shrek media that Mike Myers doesn't want to do, including all of the video games and certain mini films and stuff when Mike Myers is just like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> he's also the voice match for Rowan Atkinson as Zazu in the Timon and Pumbaa cartoon, and he's played James Gordon in Arkham Origins and Arkham Origins Blackgate. Anthony, Benjamin, and Clayton, Carmine, in Gears of War, half the bloody cast of Skyrim, and of course he was Nasty Nork in Spiral. My boyfriend has been replaying the Spiral trilogy this past week, he just finished um, Gateway to Glimmer last night, and he's about to start Year of the Dragon again, so I've been hearing a lot of Nasty Nork, just a lot of, a lot of Nasty Nork. Justin Shankaro, my boy. I could not escape this guy as a kid. Justin's been acting ever since he was a child, landing his first major role as Matthew Brock in Picket Fences at only 12 years old, which I had no idea that Holly Marie Combs was in that. I was stunned. I never watched Picket Fences, which is why I didn't know. But he already had a flourishing career prior to being in Picket Fences. He'd been appearing in Eerie and Diana, Batman the Animated Series, as well as playing Charlie Brown in It's Spring Training, Charlie Brown. He then went on to appear in a lot of cartoons. He was in Hey Arnold playing Harold, Gelman and Jordan as in Jordan of Jordan and Jerome in Recess, Eddie in Lloyd in Space, which I bloody loved as a kid. Like, Lloyd in Space is so underrated, right? Like, I'm not saying it's better than Recess, because it's absolutely not. Recess is, like, incredible and on a different level. But Lloyd in Space was massively underrated, and we need to talk about it more. And Eddie was, like, the boy. Justin's continued to act since then, and currently you can find him playing Rhino, the uh, villain, in Spidey and his amazing friends over on Disney Junior. How many damn Michaels were there in this show, for the love of God? Over here on the right we have Michael Rice, who played Nigel Ashcroft, Tarani's boyfriend. Michael Rice has had a really interesting career. His most famous role is probably as Matt Ishida in Digimon for many, many years. He's also played Igaroshi in Bleach, in Mizuki in Naruto, and Legolas in The Fellowship of the Ring video game, as you do. However, Michael's career is far more than just acting. He's also a prolific writer and producer. He's written for shows like Boston Legal, Hawaii Five-0, and the 2018 Charmed reboot, and he's also the executive producer of Shadowhunters, which I've included a picture of here if you were wondering. <laughs> um, he also wrote the horror movie Truth or Dare that came out a few years ago that starred Lucy Hale and Tyler Posey. And fun fact, he was also a lawyer before he got into all of these other things that he did. <laughs> so truly a varied career. And good for him, because you know what? Life's too short to only do one job. Do all the jobs. Go for it. Up next we have the actors for Bess and Courtney Grumper. For Bess we have Tracy Martin, who is best known as an acting coach for children. Um, she launched her own course called Coaching Kids and Teens back in 1998 and created a 24 episode series called Coaching Kids where she explains all aspects of acting. She's also starred in programs such as Science Alliance as Chili, as well as, as, well as appearing in Chicken Down as Lazy Lou, Jenny and Francine. And she's featured in a number of short films over the years including Operation Cupcake, What's Wrong With Me Dr Cranston and Bohemian Sunset. But not the biggest actor in the world, definitely more focused on her career as a coach than actually acting and appearing in things. And over to the right here playing Courtney, we have Courtney. <laughs> Courtney Peldon. Courtney started acting at age 8 when she played Tootie for the entire Broadway run of Meet Me in St. Louis. However, she's probably best known for playing Randy's girlfriend Lauren for three seasons of Home Improvement. Do you remember Home Improvement? That show was great. And look at JTT. 
God, everyone, every girl back in the 90s wanted to date JTT. Courtney was nominated for a Young Artist Award nine years in a row, and she won in 1994 and 1997. Since then, she's made guest appearances on a load of shows and appeared in a bunch of various TV movies. Some of her other recurring roles have included Becky Emerson on Boston Public, Kusi Kuka in Kuri in The Emperor's New School, and outside of acting, she has a degree in abnormal psychology. Honestly, people have the most bizarre careers. Coming in here as Tony Vandom, Will's a strange dad with a terrible hair, is Dan and Gilbazan. Dan will probably be best known to 70s and 80s kids as the voice of Spider-Man from Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, and as Bumblebee, Outback, Hotspot, and Snapdragon in the Transformers cartoon. He also played Bumblebee in the Transformers the movie in 1986 and Transformers Devastation the video game. Other than those though, he voiced Sean Harrison and Jem, Slipstream and G.I. Joe, Cooler and Pound Puppies. He also appeared in a few episodes of Diagnosis Murder, which is one of my favourite god-awful TV shows. <laughs> like, I love Diagnosis Murder. It's so bad, but so good. Back before he became a voice actor though, he was in the National Players and spent seven years doing commercials for Jack in the Box, the restaurant. Again, as you do. And as his girlfriend, Serena Sanchez, we have Elisa Gabrielli. Elisa is a fairly prolific voice actress. Her most famous roles include Pepper Potts in The Invincible Iron Man, Nana from Madagascar and Madagascar Escape to Africa, and the biggest bitch in all of Skyrim, Maven Blackbriar. In my version of Skyrim, she is currently in charge of Riften. This gal here. I felt so bad for putting Maven Blackbriar in charge of Riften, but there was like no better way to work out the un season unending um, dispute. So I ended up having to put Maven Blackbriar, and I live in Riften, like, like, well, I don't. I own Prowse Barrow Manor. I have a house in Riften because I married Mial the Lioness, so I have her house. So for a while I lived in Riften, but I suppose I moved out and moved to Prowse Barrow Manor, so it probably doesn't matter anymore. I don't have to put up with Maven on the daily anymore. Anyway. <laughs> She's another favourite of Greg Wiseman and she's appeared in Gargoyle, Spectacular Spider-Man and Reign of the Ghosts. If you don't know, Reign of the Ghosts was Greg Wiseman's book that he made an audio production of and actually got a whole bunch of his like favourite actors in to do the voices. I've mentioned it a couple of times here so far and I will mention it again. She was also Miss Lonely in the iconic 1995 Brady Bunch movie, as in the movie that brought us Sure Dan fucking love the Brady Bunch parody movies, they are so good. But most recently, if you want to hear Elisa, you can find her as Bess and Christina in the video game Twin Mirror, or as Conchetta Aragosta in Luca, the Pixar film that just came out not that long ago. Up next we have Lionel and Teresa Cook, Tarani's parents. Lionel is played by Dorian Harewood, who is an actor and singer. He first had it big as Simon Haley in Roots The Next Generations, but is probably best known for being 8-Ball in the movie Full Metal Jacket, Jesse Owens in The Jesse Owens Story, Reverend Hamilton in Seventh, he Seventh Heaven, or as Detective Sergeant Paul Strober in Strike Force. In 1998, Dorian released his only album, Love Will Stop Calling, and in 1994 he won an NAACP Image Award for his role as Cool Papa in I'll Fly Away. And a fun fact about Dorian is that his son is called John Dorian, although I'm pretty sure he was born before Scrubs became a thing. But that just made me laugh when I saw it on Wikipedia. <laughs> and over here we have Mia Korf, and how pretty is she? I just, I love this photo, like, she's so pretty. Mia began her career in the days and nights of Molly Dodd as Dr. Kim Rosenthal, before gaining a role as Blair Buchanan in One Life to Live, the soap opera. After she left One Life to Live to appear in a Broadway show called Face Value, the producers replaced her with a white actress, which just stuns me, quite honestly. Apparently the fandom now refer to her Blair as the Asian Blair. What? Like, what? Why would you, why would you replace her with a white actress? What? Mm. Anyway. Since then, she's had a range of guests and recurring roles in all sorts of TV shows, including playing Christine Kowalski in Players and Dragonelle in Max Steel, another Greg Wiseman production. 
Fun fact about Mia, um, her father was the acclaimed mycologist Richard P. Korf, who was an emeritus professor at Cornell University and co-founded the peer-reviewed international journal Mycotaxin. Um, he was like a huge name in mycology. Uh, like, I know nothing about mycology, I really don't, but apparently from what I can gather he was like the man for mycology. He passed away a couple of years ago at the age of 91, so I killed it. I was putting the couples together, but since we'd already included Harold earlier with John Cummings, I just put Galgita in here to fill a space, so I hope you don't mind. <laughs> here on the left we have Marianne Muller, Marianne Mullery, uh, who played Mrs. Rudolph, aka Galgita. Um, I was so surprised when I googled Marianne's name because it didn't ring a bell with me and then as soon as I saw her face I knew I recognised her but couldn't think why. But of course it was because she was Sister Dominic from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, one of the nun teachers at Maddie's Catholic School, as you can see there from the picture. I would never have guessed that that was Mrs Rudolph. Just never. Other than that, uh, Marianne is known for playing Norma Bates on Passions for like seven years. Um, she was Gloria in Life with Bonnie and Nana Waffles in Zeke and Luther over on Disney XD. And I also found out she is really a Catholic, but not a nun, obviously. On the right here we have Nancy Lenari, and until I was making this presentation, I had no idea that she was the voice of Elizabeth Hale. This woman is so awesome. As you can see from the pictures, Nancy was the voice of Morticia in the Adams Family cartoon back in the 90s, which is great if you never had the privilege to see it. It was awesome. I loved it. Um, I When I was a kid, I had like a kind of, I think it was a Hanna-Barbera like compilation video and it had the episode for the accidentally baked thing into the bread that Morticia was making for the baking contest and then they have to go and try and find them. It was a great show. Highly recommend. She was also the voice of Aunt May in the 2017 Disney XD Spider-Man cartoon and she came back and reprised the role for Spider-Man PS4 which I had no idea and it was so funny because like I looked her up and I obviously I know who Nancy Lenari is but it never actually occurred to me like the fact that they'd made Aunt May look like her like they got it spot on. Look how accurate they got it. I just, it never really occurred to me that they would have been trying to base her off Nancy Lenari, but they did and she looks awesome. And I think pretty much the entire Spider-Man fandom agrees that Aunt May from Spider-Man PS4 is the best Aunt May we've ever had. You should play that game. It's really good. Other than that, she appeared in The Social Network, Got More Girls, A Year in the Life, Johnny Quest, and tons of other shows, movies, and video games. She's everywhere. Just look for her. Speaking of people I had no idea were on this show, we have James C as Chen Lin. I had no idea that James C was Chen. I clearly know nothing about this show that I claim to know everything about. James C is famous for playing Jackie Chan in the beloved cartoon Jackie Chan Adventures, as well as being Jackie Chan's voice um, in some video games and also Bruce Lee in some video games. He also voiced Master Monkey in the Kung Fu Panda TV series, taking over from Jackie Chan. Um, also in some Kung Fu Panda video games. Uh, he was Lord Tarun Zhu in World of Warcraft Mists of Pandaria, uh, and he was Professor Hojo in the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I mentioned earlier about Professor Hojo coming up again, and here he is. But to me, he'll always be Eddie Raja from Uncharted. I love Eddie Raja. He's just so annoying, but so fun. Like, you're like, Eddie, for fuck's sake, but you love him. You can't not love Eddie Raja. But James appeared in many, many shows and video games, and honestly, if there's a male Chinese character in a cartoon you're watching, check the credits, because there is like a 70% chance it's James C. He's just everywhere. Over here on the right, playing Joan Lin as well as Mandy, is Rosalind Chow. Rosalind began her career only five years old when she joined a travelling opera company um, that her parents were connected to. However, after a few roles as a child, she decided not to pursue acting and instead went and got a degree in journalism at the University of Southern California. 
Short for a year as a newsroom intern at a radio station and as a tour guide at Disneyland for a while, but she decided ultimately to return to acting. She joined the cast of M.A.S.H. near the end of the show and continued playing her role in the sequel series after M.A.S.H. She also played Kiko Ishikawa O'Brien on Star Trek The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. And most recently, you can see her playing Mulan's mother in the live-action Mulan movie. She's also made guest appearances in a range of TV series and movies over the years and is scheduled to appear in the Shang-Chi sequel movie that will be coming out soon. Well, in the coming years. I don't know how long it's going to be in production for. And The Starling, which is supposed to be coming out fairly soon. Interesting fact about Rosalind is she's married to Simon Templeman, the actor who played Cain in Legacy of Cain, and to me will always be the Angel of Death from Charmed. I just think that's just super cool. What a great pairing. What a badass power couple they are. I cannot believe I'm just finding out that Mark L. Taylor is the voice of Alborn in Witch. Like, how did I not know that? Mark has been acting since the 1970s and was known in the 80s for his role as Firestorm in the Super Friends and Superpowers team cartoons, as well as playing Jimmy Olsen in the Superman cartoon, um, playing Charlie Schumacher in the Mask the Animated series, and Donald Blake in the 90s Incredible Hulk cartoon. But to me, Mark is always going to be Mr. Fulton from High School Musical 2, which is why I included my favourite line, that means mood music, not new music. Capiche? Like, High School Musical 2 is absolutely the best High School Musical film of all of them. Like, it's just so funny. It's so good. And Mr. Fulton is such a great character. Like, I know he's only in that one film, but I feel like he's so iconic, even though he isn't in the first and third. He's just so funny. Everyone remembers Mr. Fulton. So, what a great connection. Like... The Mr. Fulton from High School Musical 2 is in Witch. What a great thing for me to find out. That makes me so happy. Over here on the right, we have Vanessa Marshall, who played Mariadelle. As I said earlier, um, Mariadelle was at one point played by BJ Ward, but on the most for most episodes, she's placed by, played by Vanessa Marshall. Um, Vanessa Marshall is a Princeton graduate who gained a career in voice acting when an agent spotted her playing 15 different characters during a one-woman show. Um, she's appeared as Erwin in The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Mary Jane Watson in Spectacular Spider-Man, Poison Ivy in Batman the Brave and the Bold, uh, Black Widow in Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, um, Black Canadian Killer Frost in Young Justice Legacy, and just countless other roles. Um, she's also been the voice match for Nala in certain Lion King media and the Kingdom Hearts games. And she was in Greg Wiseman's audiobook, The um, Reign of the Ghosts, like so many other actors on this list have been. Fun fact about Vanessa, she used to be married to Big Kish, but they divorced back in 2007. They used to run a business together, it was called like Marsh Kish, I think, something like that. Um, but I don't think it's still running since they got divorced. I've also realised that I put a picture of her character from Star Wars Clone Wars on my PowerPoint and then forgot to write down the name of the character in the script, so... If you know the name of this Star Wars character, please comment in the comments below because she looks super cool, but I don't know who she is. <laughs> I never watched it. I don't really know anything about Star Wars. I just pretend that I know what I'm talking about. So, um, Chris Lear had two voices across the series. I couldn't honestly tell you who plays them in what episodes. Um, and when I tried to look online, the sources were conflicting, so... I've just included them both and I've not specified <laughs> when each of them played. So on the left we have Caesar Flores. Um, Caesar hasn't had the most prolific career ever. As a child he appeared in Daddy Daycare, which I just think is a masterpiece of a movie. He played Sean, the kid who ate the mission statement on the first day of daycare. I love that film so much, it's so funny. Uh, he's also appeared in random episodes of ER, Dexter, My Name is Errol, and others. Um, but his longest role to date was playing Alex on the cartoon Handy Manny um, on was it Nick Jr. that was on, I think? Um, he was born in 1996, so when he played Chris, he would have been around seven years old. And on the right, we have Toby Linz. Uh, Tobias Linz had a very short career as a child actor. He was in stuff when he was a kid, and then he got older and decided it wasn't for him, and I don't know anything about him past about age 10. Um, 
He appeared in a couple um, random episodes of ER, Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, he appeared in a TV movie called Remembering Charlie, where he played Charlie as a child. Uh, he also did commercials for Jolly Ranchers. But other than that, I can find very little about him. It just seems like he gave, you know, he stopped acting and disappeared off the face of the earth. Which is good for him, because we all know what happens when child actors grow up. It doesn't always end well. Um, despite the fact that the picture of him here is so young, he's actually two years older than Caesar. There's just no pictures of him when he's any older. So he would have been about nine or ten when he played um, the role of Chris in Witch. What I will say is that there are some episodes of Witch where um, Chris seems to have a like stronger kind of Hispanic, like a Spanish accent or a Mexican accent. Um, and other episodes he doesn't. And I think that's probably the best way to tell who's Caesar and who's Toby because Toby is white and Caesar is Hispanic. Um, but I can't say off the top of my head what episodes were which because I, I can't think. Um, there's a fun game for you. Go and watch episodes with Chris in them and play Guess That Accent. There's your homework. <laughs> Up next we have Alexander Felinski who was the voice and singing voice of Vance Michael Justin. Um, as a child, Alexander Felinski gained fame playing Adam Powell and Charles in Charge, so he's the other Charles in Charge actor that I mentioned earlier. Bun Uthut was in the show as a guest star, but Alexander Felinski was actually one of the main cast from season two onwards. Um, he's since then built a successful career in voice acting. He played Control Freak, who's the most chaotic villain in Teen Titans, uh, Dennis Lee in The Life and Times of Jennifer Lee, and my favourite porcupine bay, Arjit from Ben 10, Alien Force, Ultimate Alien and Omniverse. Unfortunately these days if you look up Alexander Polinsky you're more likely to find articles about his allegations that he made against Scott Bayo, which is a really sad story. Um, so Scott Bayo, as I mentioned earlier, was Charles and Charles in Charge. Um, so he was a grown-ass adult and the main star of the show while Alexander Polinsky was a young teenager. Um, and according to Alex, uh, Scott Bale physically assaulted, sexually harassed, mentally and verbally abused him during his time on the set, which is just so incredibly sad. Um, like I mentioned, I love Diagnosis Murder and I liked Scott Bale's character a lot, but I hate Scott Bale. From what I can find out about him, he is just a horrible person. He's just not nice. And I mean, with a description like that, and I've read some interviews with Alexander, and he says that he, Scott, was also really horrible to Nicole. He was just a shitty person. And imagine that situation when you're a young, you're a young boy, you're on a set, and the main star is abusing you and harassing you and hurting you. What are you supposed to do? Because I mean, no one's going to stand up to the main star, the star of the show. You know, fucking Chachi from Happy Days. Who's going to stand up to Chachi? <laughs> So you're just stuck in this situation where this person's just treating you like shit and there's nothing you can do because no one's no one's going to tell the star of the show to stop it. Hideous. I feel so bad for him and I really hope that he gets justice one day because absolutely fuck that. That's horrible. Here on the right we have Crispin Freeman who played Raphael Sella and unfortunately we never really got to see Raphael Sella or Crispin rock that role. He would have been such a good Sella and it's such a shame that we never got season three and got to see him develop. Um, Crispin is a huge name in voice acting, particularly in anime. Some of his most iconic roles include um, Zul um, Zulgadis Grey Words and Slayers, Alucard and Helsing, uh, Togusa, oh my god, to Togusa, I cannot speak, Togusa, in the Ghost in the Shell franchise, Itachi Uchida in Naruto, Jeremiah in Code Geass, Shizuo in Durarara, I can't pronounce that either, Durarara, uh, Kiri and Faye in loads more. Uh, in the West, he's probably best known for playing Electro in Spectacular Spider-Man, Roy Harper in Young Justice, John Jones in Justice League Action, he was also Will Turner in Kingdom Hearts and Firefly in the Batman Arkham games and Rude in Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII. A fun fact about Crispin that I only just found out is that his sister is Cassidy Freeman who played Tess Mercer in Smallville. I never made the connection, Freeman's quite a common last name, it never occurred to me. And actually Iona Morris who is Luba, her brother is Phil Morris who played John Jones on Smallville. So. 
Libba's sister and Scylla's, no, Libba's brother and Scylla's sister were both in Smallville together. Isn't that a cool fact? Um, another fun fact about Crispin is that one time when he was younger he actually considered changing his name to Mark because he loved Mark from the show Battle of the Planets so much. And like, mood. We've all been there. We've all wanted to change our name because we loved a character from so much. I feel you, Crispin. I really do. This is our final slide. Uh, you might be happy to hear. Uh, and here on the left we have Masasa Moyo who played Ironwood and ain't she just so pretty. Masasa is a Canadian actress best known for playing um, various roles in Justice, uh, Young Justice even, uh, including Bumblebee, Cat Grant, Wendy Harris, Secret, Sharon Vance and a few others as well. She also appeared as Psylocke and Shanna the She-Devil in a variety of X-Men video games. She was LeBlanc in Final Fantasy X2, uh, Lisa Hamilton in La Mariposa in the Dead or Alive franchise, and Adi Gallia in Star Wars Obi-Wan and Jedi Starfighter, the video games. She's also made plenty of other appearances across animation, movies, television, video games, like, look out for her because honestly she's one of these people that just does like voices and everything, she's just always there doing additional voices, ADR, she's She's there. She's everywhere. Look out for her name in the credits. She'll be there. <laughs> and last but certainly not least is Jeff Bennett, a huge name in Western voice acting. Jeff was originally the voice of the tracker, however the producers decided they thought the tracker was scarier if he didn't speak, so they asked Jeff to step down from the role, although I really doubt it was a big loss considering how many other jobs this man has to do. Um, some of his most famous roles include Johnny Bravo, the Johnny Bravo. He is Johnny Bravo. Imagine being able to say that you're Johnny Bravo. What an incredible claim to fame. That is fantastic. Um, he was Dexter's dad in Dexter's Laboratory. Uh, Jacques Van Hamsterville in Lilo and Stitch. I love Hamsterville. Uh, Joker in Batman the Brave and the Bold. Again, getting to your Joker. What a great claim to fame. The Huntsman um, and Mr. Long in American Dragon Jake Long. Kowalski and Penguins of Madagascar and so many more. Um, he won an Annie Award in 2012 for his role in Penguins of Madagascar and an Emmy in 2016 for his role in Transformers Rescue Bots. So just a really talented man, a huge name in the business and it's a shame that we didn't get to keep him but I mean I kind of get what they meant about the tracker but it's a shame we couldn't have found him something else to do because having Jeff Bennett on your cast is like that's awesome. That is great. But that is the last person I have to talk about. Ending on a high though with Jeff Bennett, but that's everyone, that's the whole cast and I think I have truly included absolutely everyone in the cast. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it has given you some random trivia. I mean that's basically like what I took away from this was just all the kind of random trivia that I've picked up. You know the idea that, that Raphael's sister is Tess Mercer or the idea that Tarani's boyfriend Nigel is the executive producer of Shadowhunters. Like, just that kind of random trivia, fun facts that you can just throw into conversations. So now you've learned, learned a ton more information about the witch main cast and you can go away and tell your friends and impress them all with your incredible witch knowledge. That is, that is the gift that I have given to you. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed, I hope you had a good time watching this, I hope you're not too sick of my voice. I'm not sure what's going to be next, I have a few videos that I'm working on editing and I don't know which is going to go up, my schedule is completely gone to pot. Um, so it's basically just whatever I get, <laughs> whatever I get finished first and I'm happiest with, that'll go up. So I won't say what's coming next because I have no idea, but whatever it is and whenever it is, I will see you there. Thanks for watching and bye bye.